Welcome back to another video about top-down RPG template tutorial series. In our previous video, we created our own player character and learned how to make it move, attack, and interact with the environment. In this video, we will cover how to create enemy characters for our game. Let's get started. To begin with, I've already imported an enemy character model into the project, along with some animations that I'll be using. The first step is to create the enemy character blueprint using the enemy character base blueprint as the parent class. Refer to the documentation for more information on the components. Set the skeletal mesh for the character. Make sure it's facing the correct direction. We can also attach static or skeletal meshes, such as weapons, to the model, but ensure that these meshes don't have any collisions. Next, we need to create an animation blueprint for the character. We can copy everything from the ABP Gameplay Animation Blueprint that comes with the template. Simply right-click on the missing variables and create them. Then copy everything from the Anim Graph and paste it into your own. You can always add more logic on top of this if you want to. Don't forget to set the animation blueprint we just created on the enemy blueprint. Now we need to set the ID of the enemy character, but we haven't created the data table yet. So let's do that first. Use the structure provided in the documentation to create your own data table for the enemy characters. Add a new entry to the data table, ensuring that the row name and ID are the same. To avoid typos, copy and paste the variables. Refer to the documentation for more information on these variables. Set the enemy blueprint here. Then create the animations for the character. When attacking, a random montage will play from the list. So, let's create two attacking animations for now. Go ahead and create the rest of the montages. Make sure that Auto Blend Out is disabled for the dying animation. Also, we can play all the montages except the dying montage on the upper body slot. This will ensure that these animations will play on the upper body of the character in case it's moving.
Finally, use speed for the name and 250 for maximum access value in the idle run blend space. You can increase this value based on the movement speed of this character. Set the XP reward and projectile ID if this enemy is range. We will leave the skills list empty for now as we'll cover skills in another video. Next up is the behavior tree. You can implement and set the AI logic here. By default, it uses the behavior tree that comes with the template, which moves the enemy towards the closest player character, attacks, and uses skills that are assigned in the data table. Now let's add some drops. Gold Drop has a chance, min-max amount, and a bias to control the randomness distribution. Setting it to 2 will make sure that the min amount occurs more often than the max amount. Individual drops are a list of item IDs with their drop chance percentage. 50 means that the item will drop half of the time. Group drops, however, have many lists of items with their drop chance ratio against each other. Only one item drops from each list. In this case, either the Life Potion or the Mana Potion will drop, and they have the same chance of dropping. Go back to the enemy character blueprint and set the ID. Let's test it out. There's a dev panel where we can spawn any enemy for testing purposes. Press F to open up this panel. Notice that the enemy character we created doesn't appear in the list. This is because we haven't told the game to use the data table we created for the enemy characters. We need to replace the existing data table with ours. To do this, open up the CDT enemy characters composite data table and swap it with our own. Once you press play, you should be able to see your newly created enemy character in the list. However, it won't be able to deal any damage yet. To add this functionality, we need to modify the animation montages. Begin by adding a Disable Input Notify State to all montages. This Notify State prevents the AI from performing multiple actions at once. Next, for attack montages, add a right-hand action notify that triggers damage to be dealt. Place the notify at the frame where the damage should occur. For casting animations, you can add a both hands action notify. Although it doesn't matter which hand action is added for enemy characters, as they don't have an equipment system. Finally, make sure that the disable input notify covers the entire duration of the dying animation. Now, we can adjust some variables and test the enemy character again. Everything looks good. And the drops are as we defined them earlier. Thank you for watching.